So before we begin, it's going to be important that you have your space set up correctly. Um, so gather all your materials, gather your clay. You should have a clear fishing line to cut the clay with and a sponge. I have a giant sponge that I just put inside an old, what is this, uh, hummus container. Um, just be sure that you have plenty of water so that way you can um, get your hands damp and keep them damp during this process. You don't want the clay to dry out as you're working with it. Um, so just leave that to the side. We're gonna be making pinch pots today. So there's a few things that I'm gonna be looking for specifically, but there's some terminology that I want you to be aware of, some anatomy as you're making it, so that way you can self-assess if you're doing a good job. So there's the rim on the top, there's walls along the side, there's a base on the bottom, and then there's feet. What I'm looking for is a level rim. I don't want it to be tilted at all. I'm looking for smooth walls, so not a uh, bumpy texture, no deep indents from your fingers. Um, I'm looking for a weight that is evenly distributed from the base along the walls. It should all be the same thickness. Um, it shouldn't feel like it has a heavy bottom. The profile shape, I'm looking for kind of a curve to it. It can have like a bell shape. Um, the most popular ones are a U shape where it kind of widens um, and then comes back around, like narrows a little bit, or a V shape where it really has a nice um, sort of, uh, it kind of comes more to a point, I guess you could say. So those are the profile shape. Um, feet, those need to be well attached. We're gonna work on that on Wednesday. Um, and that you have your full name. So let me show you some examples of what work and what don't. So here's an example of a pinch pot. It's more of a U shape versus a V shape. Let me see if I have, I don't know if I have an example of a V. But this one, you can see how it comes in a little bit more on the bottom. It narrows a little bit more. Neither one of these have feet, but you can tell they have initials and it's super hard to read just initials. Um, and it could be that I have multiple people with the same initials. Um, I have two Sophia M's, for example. So make sure that you are writing your last name at least um, and that you're, if you can write your full name, that's what I'm gonna be looking for specifically. So, types of feet, let's talk about that. We're gonna get more into this on Wednesday, but just so that you're aware, the most popular one is like a mini meatball. And it's not gonna be a full circle because you actually cut off the top a little bit so that way it follows along the curvature of your pinch pot. So if you have something that's a full circle, it doesn't attach very well because it only has a little, little amount of surface area. But if you kind of slice the top a little bit, it creates more of a surface area for it to attach to and blend into. So that's um, a well-attached foot. So a meatball shape is the most common. Um, a nice square shape is fine. And this is how you would cut that piece. Um, you can even have it come to a straight point. You just want to avoid something like this, like a cactus spike, because it has very little surface area. I would recommend that you make more of a teardrop shape and flatten the edge, so that way you have a lot of room to attach onto the piece. Um, there's a coil ring, which is basically just a giant Cheerio. Um, that's kind of how it looks like from the side, where it sits up a little, but if you were to turn it over, it would look kind of like a target ring. And you can make feet as creative or as simple as you want. I've had some people make feet that look like actual human feet, some that look like um, duck feet or bird feet. Others wanted it to look like talons or um, something wild and creative, have at it. But these are just some examples of feet that we're gonna be attaching to our project. So let's get started with some clay. bag of clay here, get your string, and you're gonna cut off a good amount in the beginning. Okay. 
Be sure to close this bag really well, get all the air out. You just don't want it to dry out as you're, as you're making your stuff. So I have my sponge nearby and I have my little bit of clay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smash the clay into like a giant meatball, making sure that my hands are damp. They're nice and shiny, can you see that? But they're not like, they're not dripping onto this onto my surface. So shiny is good, drippy not so much. Um, if you have too much water in your hands, it's gonna slide around. That's okay. Um, I'd rather have too much water than not enough. If you don't have enough, you're gonna get all these like deep cracks and crevices and it's gonna become unworkable. So, first things first. Let's smash it all up into a ball. So I'm really compressing the clay down with my hands. And once I feel like it's really tight, and it's about the size of a large golf ball, maybe like a, a lemon. If you feel like you have the size of an orange in your hand, it's too, it's too much. We'll get to that a little bit later. So here's my meatball. I'm gonna use my thumb and press about three quarters of the way down and use my other thumb to kind of wiggle in between. It's gonna be important that you keep your thumbs together and your wrists kind of close by um, as you're rotating through and kind of pressing the surface. So I'm gently pressing. You can see some of my fingerprint indents and how it kind of creates more of a bumpy profile we're gonna smooth that out, right? If I if I kept this, it wouldn't give me a, a good grade because the, the profile is so is so bumpy and not smooth. But initially, we just wanna redistribute some of that clay. So I kind of have my hands together in a lobster claw position and I'm pressing down and I'm rotating as I go. Just widening this inside part. Now you might notice that there's some cracking that happens. If it does, take a moment, stop what you're doing, and kind of buff out those marks. And if you need to get your project a little bit wet and shiny, go for it. So, the best rule of thumb I can say is to not put it on the table. If you do that and press around, what you end up getting is you lose that bell shape along the sides and you get a really flat bottom. So if I had this like sour cream container, it would look just like it. It would have nice walls, but then it would be weirdly thick here and then it would have a really flat bottom. And you wanna kinda of keep a curved shape. If you can compare them, you see how nice and curvy it is? We wanna keep that curve. Um, if yours does become more flat like this, it's okay. We're just gonna to have to be really intentional about where you put your foot ring or your feet so that way it's on the outer, outer edge. If you have it placed in the middle, it's gonna sink through. So um, just keep in mind the, the base um, as you're attaching your feet. But, Back to where we have. So my hands are wet, we're pinching. I like to keep it in my hand. I can make a C shape with the palm of my hand and it really just like tucks in there. And you're gonna use this motion of swiping. So my finger is in and it pulls towards my palm, right? Pull towards me and presses down and in. And it's really smoothing the interior and redistributing some of that clay up the walls. You can even swipe side to side 
but you're gonna slowly work your way from the bottom up the walls to the rim. And it should be about the thickness of a pencil. If you have that handy, you can kind of look and see the pencil. Right now it, it's really thick, so I wanna work on thinning it out. But you can see in an example over here that it's about the size of a pencil and it's really focusing on, on how everything is about the same thickness. Okay, The walls and the base. Before you get up to the rim. I'm really using the sides of my finger, not just the tips. All right, so I got the basic shape, I'm liking the way it looks. I got the bell pattern here. Um, I'm thinking this is more of a V shape because it has a really narrow base. Um, and then what I want to do is really smooth the outside and level the rim. So smoothing. If you want to, you can also lay this on top of a, um, like a plastic lid is fine. So that way it's on top of a surface that you can rotate and it's not getting anything like your surface dirty or anything and then I would leave it like this until Wednesday so that way we can attach our feet to something that's a little a little dried out we'll still put a bag around it but just so that way it can stiffen in a nice place um, if you feel like your rim is not level, like, let me make mine not level so you can see. Okay, whoa, my rim, it's not level. So to fix that, you're gonna wanna tap it onto a table. Um, I like to put something down. It can be a paper plate, um, a towel, but you're just gonna tap it onto a table. Um, it kind of creates a little bit of a lip underneath here, and you're gonna wanna get rid of that. So I just get my thumb wet and blend it down to get rid of that lip. Folding it back onto itself. but I can kind of check around and see. Everything looks pretty good. I might have a bit of a bump here to buff out later, but this is the general shape and I'm liking it. So I would put it on to a container and keep it safe and protected like that. And you can store it um, or you can use the bag everybody got a target bag. You can also use a Ziploc bag, that's fine too. What you can do is kind of place it, place it on top or on the inside, but you just don't want any air inside. So you can kind of tuck all of that in and it's going to stiffen a little bit. Um, put it in a safe space. I kind of have a plastic, um, shoe box, but you're going to want to keep it in a safe space until Wednesday when we, when we attach our 
um, feet. I also have a Pinterest page um, where you can look at different ideas for feet and how you might want to glaze your project. So um, I'll post that below. But that is basically it for, for Monday, for today. Um, and then we'll attach feet on, on Wednesday, okay? All right, so thank you much and enjoy. Oh, um, I guess I'll say if it's not working, like if it opens too much and starts to kind of become flat, if you have too much water or it's too thin and it becomes floppy, it's totally fine to redo it. You can smash it back up into a meatball. You can toss out the clay and get fresh clay. Um, you're gonna wanna redo a project at some point during the semester. So if you just get it out of the way in the beginning, that's fine. Um, but everybody has, everybody's learning something new and different and sometimes your fingers are learning how, um, how much pressure to apply, how much sensitivity. So don't worry if it's too, if it's not working don't let it frustrate you make a new one and then keep the old one off to the side because you might use it for something later but um that's just what i wanted to share with you guys okay all right see you later